Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This is episode 4 of my Practical Logic series, and today I'll be going over clocks. Okay, in Star Maid, um, you have two basic types of clocks uh, that I know of. There may be more. I'm just going to refer to these as being stable and unstable. The stable, the easiest ones to build, are just a inverted delay and this delay chain can be as long as you want and it will spend half of its time being on and half of its time being off so this is just a half second delay but this is a full second clock it just has a you know spends half of its time being in the on or off state so you put that into a light it'll blink uh, half a second on and then stay off for half a second but if I have two delays, it'll be on for a second and then off for a second. And this is very easy to build. It's always on. And a loading, unloading should not break this design. So that's just a delay into a knot. And then the knot back into the delay. Toggle the delay twice. And you have a clock. So you can turn this off if you get the timing right. But as you can see, it doesn't always turn off you just you gotta get it timed right so to have a better timed version or a uh, toggleable version you just take the activator into an AND the AND into the knot and then into your delay chain and then back into the AND so that would be activator goes into an AND the AND goes into a knot and then the knot goes into a delay chain which then feeds back into the AND. Talk a little couple times. Alright. This one you need um, an on si a high signal going into the AND to actually turn it on. Talk a couple times and we now have a working clock. So you can see it on for a second and a half, off for a second and a half. And this is the output of this clock off for a second and a half, on for a second and a half. And this is nice because all you do is take um, a knot to the activator and then wire that into your lights so whenever this turns on it'll turn your lights off and start flashing so you can have uh, easy warning lights like uh, red alert if you will have it on airlocks and um, hangar bays so when I open the doors to the hangar bays, the lights blink. So next up here is a storage-based system clock. And this is a 10-second clock. And uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Every 10 seconds, um, it'll change state. So you can have something on for 10 seconds and then something else on for 10 seconds. I just have it triggering a pulse limiter here and blinking the light every 10 seconds. So these are nice because for a 10 second delay this is really compact, compact or actually up to a 20 second delay. This is really compact. Um, the downside is it will always have to be manually started when you load the ship in because the items in here will not um, carry over and this, this one's really easy to build and I have a multiple delay uh, back there needs a little extra circuitry so you know you can just fill these with rocks anything you have left over it doesn't matter and that is just um, you know two chests linked into each other and then ores next to the chest and both those ores feed into the pulse limiter and then you tell them to filter one of your item back and forth and once one's turned on so you put the items in and then you turn the other one on and that'll start it and it'll tick once every 10 seconds so I'm actually going to be using these probably on stations and whatnot and have a, a blinking light actually have it on this little station down here so it's working Blink, blinks my plex lights twice every 10 seconds 
So, good use for that. So over here we have an unstable clock. In this form it's unstable, but we can add error checking to it later to make it um, a lot more reliable. So what this is, is just an, a long delay chain, and you have a pulse limiter feed a half second delay uh, pulse into it. And then you have an AND gate that will also um, turn it off when you want it to turn off, it has to it has to complete a full cycle to turn off. But these have uh, problems. Uh, sometimes restarting the game will cause it to uh, cause the delay to either shorten or lengthen, and that's not ideal. And here you can see why this is called a I'm calling this a unstable clock. Uh, when I restarted the game, it now has a 3.5 second tick running through it instead of the 5 second tick. And that could jam up completely. Right now it's it's just running a basically half second uh, low pulse through it, which it's supposed to run a half second high pulse. So that's why I call these unstable. And it's easy to fix, though. So over here we have the same loop set up activator into the AND and a, an infinite delay chain but this one has the error checking set up so and auto restart um, to do that we have all of the delays wired into this OR gate as well as a NOT from the activator so when any of these signals is on this is high and this is an inverted pulse limiter, so it'll send out a high pulse whenever this goes low. So if any of these turn off, but this is not turned on, this will send out a pulse. So I can demonstrate that by manually stopping. And you saw that flash, and it started over again. So that's how you fix it if um, you restart the the game or the ship loads in first and for whatever reason this pulse is dropped it'll restart it that way and that is also the startup activation now the next error state is if you get an a extra long signal and this AND gate fed from the last two delays in the chain will fix that so if these are on this will be on, which this knot will turn off the AND gate, um, so it'll break the loop. And another thing to note is you can customize the delay by changing the distance uh, where you actually pull from that AND. So now it'll be a two second, or not a two second, a uh, two tick, uh, full second loop running through there. Um, to make th this uh, function with a full f uh, second, uh, you'll need to switch up the activation module, the activation circuit here. Uh, it's not, not too much more circuitry. Um, so the demonstration of the right circuit for the right job. Uh, if I was just using a regular pulse limiter, I'd have to be inverting it. Um, so you'd have to go OR, invert, and then the pulse limiter, which would take up even more space. So using the right pulse limiter for the job makes it more compact, and that's why I went over every one of those in um, episode two, I believe. So, gain a knot. So this is three, basically three logic gates bigger than this one. Or four, yeah, because it has another one there. So four logic gates for all the error checking, and you can build that delay chain as long as you want. And you can also set it up to, say, um, I want two ticks running through it. gotta let it clear and now I have two ticks running through it 
And as long as the ticks are the correct length, this circuit will not clear them. But I have not figured out a way to simply make a longer tick with this circuit. Because if I do that, it clears the second one. It doesn't like feeding two ticks in like that, so you'd need to isolate this circuit out a little more. A little more complex. I'm not going to go over that here. So last up is a uh, programmable long delay clock, and this is in increments of 10 seconds. And this is nice, because you can have it pull items one direction in one speed, and then pull items another direction in the other speed. I just have it passing two activation modules back and forth. Which doesn't work for this one, because if both of these are on, it just it just locks up and doesn't function. So what you have to do is you have to add an RS Norlatch memory cell, which I went over last episode. And that controls which chest is on. And when a chest is empty, this OR gate will change, as you saw there. And this is another inverted high pulse limiter, so when this circuit goes low, it sends out a high pulse, which will then trigger the next stage of the RS Norlatch. So it'll, it'll toggle the RS Norlatch. And then again, I just have the little... Uh, the two bits of the RS Norwich into the pulse limiter. And so this will blink once every 20 seconds, and if I tell this to do that, I can now have it blink once, and then 10 seconds later blink once, and then 20 seconds later blink and then 10 seconds later blink, so it's it's got a, a wide amount of control to it, so... Um, not sure how useful it is, it's just an interesting concept, and it is a clock, so I figured I'd include it, and if I was going to show you how to do the 10 second clock using storage, I might as well show you how to expand on the 10 second clock uh, for a more uh, programmable delay. And I think you can have this set up to like shoot off fireworks from your base if you want. Uh, I don't know. That's just an idea. So, um, yeah, that'll about cover it for clocks for today. And thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next video.